everyone, this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. And because I'm really awful at synopsises, really bad, I'm just going to read what they have on Amazon for the synopsis. I'm going to, and then I'm going to continue doing this until I feel comfortable with my own synopsises to read you those. It's right here on my computer, so if I'm staring down, I'm very sorry. Every year, Blue Sergeant stands next to her clairvoyant mother as the soon-to-be-dead walk past. Blue never sees them, until this year, when a boy emerges from the dark and speaks to her. His name is Gansey, a rich student at Aglin B, the local private school. Blue has a policy of staying away from Aglin B boys. Known as Raven boys, they can only mean trouble. But Blue is drawn to Gansey in a way that in a way she can't entirely explain. He's on a quest that has encompassed three other Raven boys. Adam, the scholarship student who resents the privilege around him. Ronan, the fierce soul whose emotions range from anger to despair. And Noah, the taciturn watcher who notices many things but says very little. For as long as she can remember, Blue has been warned that she will cause her true love to die. She doesn't believe in true love and never thought this would be a problem. But as her life becomes caught up in the strange and sinister world of the Raven boys, she's not so sure anymore. So as you can kind of tell by the synopsis, it is mostly told from the perspective of Blue, um, but it does kind of switch perspectives between her and um, Gansley, Gansey mostly, sometimes Adam, um, but it is mostly her perspective. It is also told in third person. This is a YA contemporary fantasy. I don't know, it's set in contemporary day, but there are obviously fantastical elements. So I gave this book a three out of five stars. So the things I really liked about this book was I liked how individual the characters were. They really felt like different people. They didn't feel like carbon copies of each other. They each had their own personalities and voices and like wants and needs. So I really liked that, that they were not the same or they were not bland. Like they did have full, mostly full, fully fleshed personalities. I did also really like the supernatural aspects in here. So I'm not often drawn to contemporary books, or I don't often read contemporary books that have like fantasy overtones. I'm more often to pick up just like full-fledged fantasy. It's called high fantasy or epic fantasy. It's just fantasy where it's fully immersed in that world. But I really did like how the supernatural fantasy aspects were woven throughout the story. It did feel very organic and very well-researched, because I do know a little bit about supernatural as they consider it in like our world and like there's this thing about ley lines. Ley lines are these lines of energy and where they connect they create these like pockets of energy. And I feel like the author did a pretty good job of explaining and kind of explaining that to the readers and I think she it seemed like she had researched it a bit um to be able to incorporate it in her book which I really liked and I thought worked out really well. So now the things I didn't like and more of the reason and this is more of the reasons why I got the three stars and the reasons I did like. So while the main characters were mostly fully fleshed characters or people, all the other side characters were not. They were so far into the stereotypes to almost be caricatures of what they're supposed to be. Like I wouldn't even call them stereotypes, like they are caricatures. They are this overblown dramatic example of what you would expect a person like that to be. And I didn't really care for that because like it didn't feel organic and it didn't feel real. Like it just felt kind of put upon. And another big thing I really didn't like was there was very, very little, if any, diversity in this first book. All the main characters, as far as I know, are white. They are all able-bodied. Three of the boys, Gansey, Ronan, and Noah, are all rich, privileged kids. Adam and Blue are both middle, lower class. So it was just, there was no extra, there was no diversity within those characters. And Blue is the only girl of her age in the book. So that was another like dip in diversity because like it's mainly these four boys with Blue. And so you get to see their relationships with other, like their relationships, but you never get to see Blue have another relationship with another female. You do get it a little with, with Blue's mom Mora and her two friends, Kala and Persephone, because they all live together in the same house, but it it wasn't quite the same as having like blue have a best girlfriend who can she can share these other things with and like i said before all the other side characters including mora persephone and kala were all caricatures of what they were supposed to be so they 
their relationships didn't feel organic either. Plus, we don't actually see them interact all that often. And so that was kind of disheartening for such a hyped up book here on YouTube about how great it is. And I'm not saying it's bad, like I really enjoyed reading it. I was pretty invested in the characters. It's just for something that is that, that is that hyped up, I would really have liked to have seen more diversity. So those are my thoughts on The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. I do know it's a series, so that's the first one I think of four. And until the next video, ta-ta for now!